Hi guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the game Alfred Hitchcock's Why. This game came out from Parker Brothers in 1958 and it is for two to four players. Now the object of this game is you are going to be trying to solve a mystery. You're going to be trying to find out a particular ghost, a particular weapon, and a particular motive. Ultimately the game is about trying to figure out why these ghosts are haunting this house. So anyway, let's take a look at it. The object of the game is this. You're going to be privatized and you're going to be collecting uh trying to collect the largest reward by uncovering the most evidence as to why the ghosts haunt this particular house and uh, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to find the ghost the weapon and then the motive so in the house you've got six different rooms over here um, and you're going to be placing uh, a certain amount of these cards in each of the rooms. Now, in a four-player game, which is what I've got set up, you're going to be using car putting cards in all of these different rooms here for evidence. And here are the cards. Now, there's several different types of cards over here. You've got uh, the weapon cards, and there's several different weapons. And uh, this card comes in four parts. So they're four axe cards, and then when you put them together like a puzzle, they're going to make the picture of the axe. Uh, you also have... Uh, the ghost cards that are the same way. They have four cards in each, and this one particular one is Henry. And then you also have the Alfred card, and uh, if you're able to make this card along with the It's Your Mystery to Me card, you'll be able to win the game that way as well. And here is the It's a Mystery to Me card. Now along with that, you're going to be trying to find the motive, and there's only one card each here, so you just need to have one of them. But here are the different motives. There's self-defense, there's robbery, jealousy, lover's quarrel, bribery, blackmail. Um, and then they also have what is called the No Clue card, and you're going to be using these cards anytime somebody asks you for a card. And I'll show you how that works here in just a little bit. So in the very beginning, you're going to deal out seven cards to each player, and then you're going to go ahead and place the rest of them evenly throughout the room over here. So before the game starts, you're going to choose one of these private eyes over here. You've got Dick Crazy, you've got Charlie Clam, you've got Sergeant Monday, and then you also have Shylock Bones. These are pretty nice pieces. They've got these really nice little wooden bases, and uh, these are pretty thick too. So anyway, you'll just simply pick one, and you're going to start it over here in the living room. In the game, you also are going to have a pair of dice you're going to be throwing and moving around the rooms. And right over here, surrounding the board, is what is called the yard. Now, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be discarding cards into this area, and people are going to have an opportunity to try to find uh, cards that they are looking for. Okay, so we have the board set up, and everyone's going to go ahead and take the dice and roll them. Whoever has the highest number is going to go ahead and start. And first player will go ahead and roll, and let's say I'm Shylock Bones. So what I'll do is, here's the door to the living room, so I'll go one, two, three, four, five. And now if I want to, I can go ahead and go into this room, which I'll go ahead and do and say six. So one way I can search for clues is simply go into the room and then go ahead and draw the card. In this case, I've got the rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at my cards and see what I've got. i got a Henry, a couple of poison cards. Uh, Pocahontas, but no rope. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to discard one of these cards in the yard, which is in this section over here. And I'm going to go ahead and show everybody what the card is, and then I'm going to discard it into the yard. Uh, another way that I can get cards is, let's say I was over here, and another player uh, rolled exact count and landed on the same space as I did. What he can do is he can essentially ask me for a card. And so let's say he's looking at his hand, and what he'll do is he'll go ahead and show me the card that he's looking for. Uh, now, you're not going to have to do this if it's the it's a mystery card or if it happens to be a motive card, just if it's the weapon or the ghost. So let's just say I, I show one of my opponents, hey, I need a poison card. Do you have one? And if he has one, he'll have to go ahead and show him, give it to me. If it turns out that I don't have the card that he asked for, I'm going to have an opportunity to ask him for a card. Now, if somebody ends up asking you for a particular card and you happen to have it, but you also have this card in your hand, the no clue card, you can give them this card in place of it. And the, what your opponent will do uh, is they'll just simply get rid of this card and discard it, and it's going to be out of the game. Now, you're going to have a maximum of seven cards, so if you end up having less than that, you're not going to have to discard until you have seven. So a third way you can get cards is if uh, you are in a room and someone is into the same room as you are, and there's a couple ways you can do this. You can roll and get in there, but if you roll a seven or an 11 or doubles, you'll be able to choose whatever room that you would like to go into automatically. So if uh, you end up in the same room as somebody, you can go ahead and ask them for a card. So the third way you can get cards is if you end up drawing a card from the yard. So the way you'll do that is you'll just simply go to the living room, and you can do that either by moving there or by rolling the 7, the 11, or the doubles. If you end up in the living room, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and show everybody 
um, the car that you believe is going to be in the yard somewhere. Say I had the poison card. I say, okay, I'm going to think the poison card is one of these two cards over here. And in this case, it's not. So what's going to happen is the player is going to have to uh, take the card that he thought it was and then discard it. Now, if it turned out to be the right card, he's going to keep it in his hand and then discard another card. Uh, well, now, another thing you can do is if you end up uh, guessing correctly, rooms, you'll be able to go again the yard, and continue to draw cards from the yard so long as you are right. Player's hands or and whatever. Whenever you are this wrong, is going to trigger another section of the game everybody's going to end up going back to the living room you're going to roll the dice and if you roll an odd number say a five this will give you an opportunity to draw a card from the yard and uh, again you'll do the same way say okay i think this is where cleopatra is right here you draw it it's not cleopatra so what you'll end up doing is you're going to go ahead and discard the card you thought it was face up um, if it turns out to be the right card um, then you'll just discard a card at random and then place it over here um, now, if you end up rolling evens, this is you're going to lose your turn. But if you end up rolling a seven, or eleven, or doubles, the, once again, this is going to give you the opportunity to go ahead and uh, take a card from somebody. Now, whenever you end up getting a complete set, like here's the four Neros or whatever, you're going to go ahead and lay them down. You can uh, create the puzzle if you would like to, or just lay them down like so. And uh, the first player that ends up laying down all four cards of a ghost, four cards of the weapon, and then the motive. Or if they do get the entire Alfred Hitchcock puzzle and the It's a Mystery to Me, they are going to win the game. And that, folks, is Alfred Hitchcock's Why. So my final thoughts on Alfred Hitchcock's Why. Well, if you're a fan of Alfred Hitchcock, I think this is a game that you might like. Now, this is a game that is about 70-some-odd years old, but I like the way it plays. Uh, the cards are really nice. I like the artwork on them and the way they make uh, the different characters and the different weapons. In a lot of ways, this game is a lot like memory, where you're having to try to remember where these certain cards are, because the yard is going to start filling up pretty quick, and then there's going to be all these cards, and these cards will be going back and forth. Um, and then, of course, you can uh, ask your opponent for cards and things of that nature. So, yeah, this is a very good little game. There's a lot of different options in this game when you're trying to figure out uh, build your hand. Well, would I recommend it? Yeah, if you are a fan of mystery games, this is a good little one to get. So guys, that's my review of Alfred Hitchcock's Why. We'll see you later. Keep on gaming.